Hello, your ITV News this Thursday evening. The impact of coronavirus in the Channel Islands steps up significantly. Guernsey is now advising anyone with certain symptoms to self-isolate whether they've been abroad or not. Everyone who has any flu-like symptoms, and that could be a fever, it could be a sore throat, runny nose, blocked nose, uh, myalgia, to stay at home until 48 hours after the symptoms have resolved. In another attempt to stop the virus spreading, people are told not to travel on or off island unless absolutely necessary. Jersey State is meeting right now, but as yet, neither island has banned mass gatherings. But those responsible for some of our most vulnerable people have taken that decision for themselves. Plus, as the world battles with COVID-19, we look at the potential cost to businesses here and ask what could be done to help them. Good evening. First tonight, a significant step change in the battle to prevent the spread of coronavirus in the Channel Islands. Guernsey has announced strict new guidelines on travel and when to self-isolate. More from St Peter Port in a moment. But first to Claire Burton, who's in St Helier, where an emergency states meeting's been taking place this afternoon. Claire, what happened in that meeting? Well, the meeting is meant to be followed by a press briefing, which hasn't actually begun yet. As you can appreciate, it's a fast-changing situation. Uh, but people in Jersey have been calling for political leadership on this all week, and today we have got some. Uh, in a press release I've just received, uh, we're hearing that GPs are going to get government funding to actually go out into the community uh, to test the over-80s uh, for coronavirus. Uh, we also hear that non-employment government business travel is suspended. That includes teachers, so anyone that's in an essential government role is now banned from travelling off island. Uh, large scale events and public gatherings are being reviewed all the time and decisions on school closures also are still being reviewed. So no details on that tonight. OK, for now, Claire Burton, thank you. Well, in Guernsey, anyone with any flu-like symptoms, however mild, is being told to put themselves into isolation. That new advice issued by the public health team this afternoon applies regardless of whether the person has travelled abroad or not. Health experts say it's the best way to protect the island's resilience. Serena Sandu has more. With coronavirus being deemed a pandemic and with one confirmed case already in Guernsey, public health has announced new measures to contain its spread. They're asking everyone who has any flu-like symptoms, and that could be a fever, it could be a sore throat, runny nose, blocked nose, uh, myalgia, to stay at home. If they're well enough, they can work at home, but to stay at home until 48 hours after the symptoms have resolved. But for people not to go into work, to school, to any public place, if they have respiratory symptoms, we believe that will help limit any spread within our island infrastructure. We're recommending that islanders limit all non-essential travel off island. We feel that's really important because travelling to areas where there's ongoing viral replication, ongoing viral seeding, poses a potential risk not only to that individual, but also to our island infrastructure. We're also recommending that people limit non-essential travel onto Guernsey and Alderney as well. So really important again that we look at reducing the flow of people on and off the island. As from today, anyone who is admitted to our hospital with flu-like symptoms will be tested for COVID-19 and any patients with any respiratory symptoms on our intensive care will also be tested for COVID-19. So again, it's just increasing our awareness of the spread of the virus and being sure that we detect all possible cases that we can. This is the most significant public health challenge since the end of the Second World War. This, this is for real, this is, not, uh, this, this is not anybody overreacting, so they need to follow the advice. And the advice has changed today, it's changed significantly, and the, the community absolutely need to get on board with that in order to mitigate the, the challenge which, uh, which uh, Dr Brink has identified. So all islanders need to do their bit to try and prevent the spread of the virus around the community. Serena Sandu, ITV News. 
Well, let's join Serena, who's live in St. Peter Port now. Serena, these are significant measures that will have an impact on everyone living there, won't they? Yes, that's right. Um, unprecedented steps taken by public health here in Guernsey, but we are living in somewhat unprecedented times. You heard from the chief minister there saying that this is the most significant public health challenge since the Second World War. Health experts know that they're taking a conservative approach, but say they would rather that we thought they were acting harshly rather than not acting enough. Only essential travel being recommended, whether that's abroad or to the UK or between the islands. That will clearly have a significant impact on businesses here and on the state's owned airline or Reni. All islanders with flu-like symptoms are now also being asked to self-isolate though. But it is hoped by implementing these measures early, we can control the spread of the virus. And Serena Nicola Brink was keen to point out that self-isolation means self-isolation. Yes, exactly that. It means staying at home, not going to work or to school, not going to the gym or to the shops or any other public places. Now, there is guidance on the state's website, gov.gg. The advice is to remain in your bedroom and to keep your door locked and to try and use a separate bathroom. If you are in a shared house with just one bathroom and one kitchen, the advice then is to only use those facilities when no one else is in there and to make sure that they are cleaned regularly as ever you need to catch your coughs and your sneezes and to wash your hands regularly well let's now speak to our sports correspondent tony kerr tony a lot of international sporting events cancelled or postponed now do you think the same is going to happen here yeah as you say we've seen several football leagues across europe suspended uh, today including la liga in spain so big stuff and clearly uh, sport in the islands on a slightly different scale to that but all relative uh, I guess uh, here in Guernsey uh, the states have said well it is uh, as things stand at the moment but expect more guidance uh, for all sporting events over the next 24 hours to come uh, in Jersey as we've been hearing as well sounds like they're, they're uh, going a, a, a similar route um, that is uh, as things stand at the moment now some things uh, some events have been called off the uh, Channel Island Swimming Championships due to be held uh, in Jersey next week uh, they've been postponed uh, Jersey Reds however will be making their trip to Nottingham on Saturday uh, in the Championship. Con confirmation coming through from the host club uh, this afternoon that that one goes ahead. Uh, but one man who won't be in action uh, for the foreseeable future is Jersey Scott Clayton, a professional tennis player, uh, of course, uh, who plays on the ATB Tour, which has been suspended today for six weeks. Obviously, you've got players in, in Italy that might not necessarily be able to even get out to train. Um, so I think six weeks for now is, is a pretty good period for for the tour to stop and then people can make arrangements as and when they can get out and travel a bit more and e even get to training. Now we're looking ahead a few weeks of something that's coming up in May. Tickets for this year's Marathi uh, men's final went on sale uh, today. That one due to be played at Springfield. Uh, now the uh, Jersey FA do remain confident that will happen uh, on the date in question but they haven't ruled out postponing it. Our view is uh, we believe the Marathi will happen on the uh, 16th of May with the w women's on the 17th uh, but if not I see it just being uh, p postponed and moved it, it, you know further on so probably uh, towards the summer months so I, I still believe we'll have uh, all of our Marathi will take place. So I guess all of this is as things stand we'll be monitoring it closely. OK, thank you very much, Tony. So an evolving situation here. Decisions still to be announced about sporting events and mass gatherings, but likely to have an impact across the islands. OK, Serena Sandu, thank you. Those responsible for looking after some of our oldest residents are taking action to protect them from the outbreak ahead of the official advice coming from our governments. Yes, Age Concern is suspending activities in its care homes from tomorrow. A nursing home in Jersey has closed its doors to visitors and several care homes are restricting who they allow on the premises. Here's Sally Simmons. 92-year-old Millie found out this afternoon that tomorrow will be the last day she and her friends can get together. Age Concern decided safety had to override socialising. Group activities cancelled until further notice. We play this and then we have lunch. 
Wednesday, Thursdays and Fridays I go, I come, but there's a lady over there that comes every day. Monday to Friday. Mm. No, you don't. You see, you don't have to cook. It's all ready for you. Three courses. Mm. <laughs> and how much will you you miss it? Oh, terrible. Mm. Oh, awful. and it's the company. We're going to miss everybody. Yeah. Because we all get on so well, yeah. don't we? Yeah. 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 Absolutely, get on so well. It's going to be a shame, but it's it's a, it's it's got to be done for safety mm. reasons. So uh, we can't really do much much else about us. We look after the most vulnerable people in society and with the lack of guidance from the government we felt that it was down to us to make sure that they were safe. Waving through the window, human contact now restricted at this home on Trinity Hill. Palm Springs Nursing Home today made the decision to say no to visitors. They say it's not a decision they've taken lightly but that the safety of their residents is paramount. Abbey Field Care Homes say they're restricting visitors. They just don't want to take any risks. And others are following suit. Age Concern will deliver frozen meals from Monday. The pile of plates, now redundant. Cutlery, just for one. As COVID-19 starts to close doors across Jersey. Sally Simmons, ITV News. Well, aside from the clear health concerns, the other worry is the effect it will have and indeed is already having on businesses. Guernsey's chief minister admits the pandemic will damage the island's economy, while Jersey's tourism sector is calling for more help from the government. Keelan Webster reports. The impact of coronavirus on everyday life in the Channel Islands is increasing by the day. For businesses in Guernsey, problems have already begun. The island's government insists they're ready to help during this period of uncertainty, but admits there'll be significant financial problems. Our economy is going to be impacted in the same way as the, the economies elsewhere. This is a, a significant It'll be largely a demand side shock to the economy in terms of, of, of the loss of demand as people are no longer coming to, to, to visit or um, people are you know, doing less of what they might otherwise have done. That inevitably uh, is going to have a knock on impact on, on individuals' incomes, particularly on, on smaller businesses and small and sole traders. At this stage, we're very much in an information gather, gathering stage of understanding what the impact is, what the requirements are likely to be, and then we'll design something that's appropriate. The concerns for businesses, though, is that the impact of coronavirus is already being felt and that this is a fast-paced, ever-changing situation. Kevin dudley Bosher works for Guernsey-based financial firm Ravenscroft and believes the government must act now in order to help businesses stay afloat. I think it needs to start right away. No, ab absolutely. Um, so I think there will be some businesses. We, you know, we ourselves, um, unfortunately, had to cancel an event this week. So it's clear that the negative impact is being felt right now um, across those businesses in the, in the front line um, and therefore I think the fund needs to get up and running and decisions made as quickly as possible. Meanwhile the tourism sector is already beginning to suffer across the islands. This Jersey office is home to 365 Tickets, a company selling entry to worldwide attractions including the London Eye and Disneyland Paris. But with public gatherings around the world under threat, so is their business, and they need Jersey's government to step in. We are after support. Um, uh, we're a very viable business. It's just that this pandemic has, has obviously um, had significant impact. There is definitely a requirement for cash to make sure that we have cash in the bi business. Deferring things like Social Security and those uh, GST is great, but they're not an immediate um, fix for this very, very short window that we have to, to make sure that our industries are protected. Help is undoubtedly required to ensure businesses survive whilst coronavirus concerns still exist. And for many, they'll be keeping a close eye on what the island's governing bodies do next. Keelan Webster, ITV News. A mobile coronavirus testing centre has been set up in Jersey. The health department isn't revealing exactly where it is to maintain patient confidentiality, but this photograph from a viewer shows medics working in the Five Oaks area. That's thought to have added to the growing number of people who've been tested for COVID-19. In Jersey, a total of 111 people have now been tested. Two patients have tested positive, no more confirmed cases today, and no deaths as a result of the 
outbreak. In Guernsey, let's have a look at the figures for there. A total of 129 people have now been tested, but officials say there's been no increase in positive tests, which remains at one. Again, nobody has died from the virus. Over in the UK, though, more than 29,000 people have now been tested. There are now 590 confirmed cases. That's an increase of 140 from yesterday and 10 people have now died. Well, officials in Alderney are planning how they can transport people with coronavirus to Guernsey for specialist treatment should they need it. Orini's Medivac service isn't allowed to carry patients with contagious diseases because of its contract. Guernsey's health department says it's hoping most people could be treated on island, but alternative routes are being discussed. There is talk that the Flying Christine could be utilised. It takes an hour and a half to get up here and an hour and a half to get back in reasonably good weather. Uh, at the, the push, the lifeboat could be used, and they have done so before uh, and in extreme cases. Sark Shipping says it's working to make sure services between Guernsey and Sark continue with minimal disruption wherever possible. At the moment, the company says it is business as usual, but bosses are monitoring the situation closely. Different scenarios are being considered, with the firm's priority being the protection of its staff, but also the cargo service to Sark, which delivers food to the island. There are currently no cases of coronavirus in Sark. We've advised the staff it's, you know, clean everything that doesn't move, wash your hands regularly, actually, you know, restrict yourself to the bridge so we've got minimum contact with passengers whilst on board, yet trying to maintain that business as usual. Well, as more action is taken here on coronavirus, the same is happening in the UK, of course. Details of that are coming up in around 10 minutes' time on the ITV Evening News with Mary Nightingale. The government brings in new measures to tackle the coronavirus outbreak as cases in the UK soar again. The Prime Minister chaired an emergency meeting this afternoon, moving Britain's response into a new, more urgent phase.